Good Sunday morning and welcome back to the channel guys. So today I'm going to be taking a look at a low unit precision strike deck for Scoytail. And I have to say from the get go, I tried a few different versions of the deck and I really wanted to make it work. However, I feel right now it's in a bad spot. It's just feeling very power crept. And I tried to go for an option that would give me a, enough points as well. But it does struggle in certain matchups. And I do think that this is something that could get you to pro rank however i don't think it's something that's going to be extremely competitive in pro rank and it really just comes down to your preference if you enjoy playing this way you'll have a lot of fun there's going to be some close games with tournament style feelings however it's not going to be blowing your opponent out of the water with points because uh we don't have a lot of points now i went through a few different versions of the deck okay and this is going to be the final one that i have here the other one has a slight substitute being Spores instead of Red Haze. So I have a couple games with both in the video today. But um, the initial version did have Madoc, and I found that it was being answered too easily. So I opted to take out the Madoc here. And I also wanted to try and use the Hengate Sword as kind of an expansion on the strategy that I was using for the Saskia deck about a week ago. And this didn't work out too well as well. Because in the other deck, Saskia came with a lot of tempo. And in this deck here, it doesn't have the same sort of tempo. So to play this card, it feels even slower. And that's pretty well it. I tried to greed it out, maybe not put on Neuromancy and put more options for points within the deck. But I just felt like uh, we were missing cards that we needed at that time. And when your cards aren't as strong, you play more cards and it kind of helps out. So I felt like when Neuromancy was there to add value to the gore to make sure we get all of our good cards in the deck. So, um, overall, not upset with it. I just think, like I said, the archetype itself is just in a little bit of a struggle. I did try and incorporate the two new cards here, being Etriel and Merliga. Now, even with the buff of provisions, they're sort of playable. I don't think that they're great. Because they're still dependent on getting the other one here. And, of course, they're vulnerable when left on the board. So I feel like in this type of deck, there maybe are units that play a little bit better. But whenever there's a patch or a card changes, I want to try it out and see how it is for myself. But overall, they were okay. I think maybe they do a bit better in Harmony. I like when we play these off Bountifuls and we get the um, Half Elf Hunters. Like those are pretty cool. Because then we get like a Harmony engine and we play around it a little bit with this card. But it was a little bit underwhelming like to say there's sometimes where it's really clutch there's sometimes where it's just not very good but uh to go through the deck here a little bit more we have neuromancy to play any card from deck twice throughout the game because that has echo status we have simlast that's going to be playing all copies of a bronze special from our deck so we're going to be looking for something like the battle of harvest or the nature's rebuke i like to pair up force protector with that so we get either a third harvest or a third rebuke right we have a tall punish here with the karathi heat wave we have Vigo's Muzzle, which we can manipulate with our leader ability and pings off other things so that we can take like a really important card from their side of the playing field. We have a little bit of a non-interactive package here. The Synthesis has immunity, so it can't be manually targeted. This is like a really good card to boost up in hand and keep it out of removal reach. And then Sabertooth Tiger is kind of nice because we can just transform that and get a passive ability of doing damage if there's only one unit on their row. They tend to play around this quite often, so I do have cards like Making a Bomb to kind of split up the rows in that way. However, it's just a nice way to protect our points. And I had one matchup where I was playing in the traps and it was quite satisfying because they this was boosted in hand from Dunka or something like that. And uh, they had like a pitfall trap and it survived and I flipped it and it healed. It was great. So cool card. I like it. And Dunk is here. Basically, every turn we can boost a Squirtle unit in our hand by one. And, of course, we have an order that we can use. Damage something by three. Help kind of extend our reach and take something out. This is one of our few proactive plays. So, I really like to have Dunk in a deck like this. It plays really well in round one when we can boost it up with our tactical advantage. So, that's pretty much it there. I opted to go for TA for that reason. But also, if we want to take round one of these, we could boost one of them maybe. And, uh keep it out of easy removal range so that we can pull off the other one, stuff like that, right? Or just dish the boost onto maybe like a Sentinel if we take a round one thin. So a couple options there. 
Gord is sort of like the centerpiece of the deck, so Gord deploy boosts help as zero increase the boost for one by each special card you played during the game. Boost cannot exceed 12. So usually, Gord is going to get the maximum value from the 12 counter, because we have tons of specials in the deck. But he might also get some hand buffs from Dunka or Bountiful Harvests. So there might be some instances here where Gord plays for about 20 points, and it's definitely one of our win conditions. So with this deck here, the thing is we really want to have last say so that we can pull off an uncontested Gord. The issue is that we don't have a lot of tempo in round one unless we take cards like Simlas and Leader. So you kind of have to go all in early on and just hope that this, you know, carries enough points to win the game along with the control to prevent their strategy from working. So it's, like I said, in a tight spot, but it's something you can definitely pull off. And as far as the lock, I think it's important because we won't be able to remove everything that they play. It's just not, you know, it's not always the case, right? So we have the ability to lock if we play this on range. We have the ability to damage by two if we play this on melee. So the floor of this is seven points. The ceiling is super high because we could lock a Colgrom. We could do whatever we need to do, right? There could be some engines that get out of control that we, you know, need to get rid of. So this card here, damage unit by three. If I control Merliga, damage it by 7. So we can go for taller removal. Or we could do the reverse order of play. And we can basically um, play this one by 3 first. And then this one can play damage 3 you know, units by 3, like adjacent. So uh, I like to more than often play this first and this second. However, there's some times where you need to take away a 6 or a 7 or something like that. And you reverse the order. So that's basically it. Battleful Harvest, create and play a Bronze Skoy Tell Elf, depending on the position of the chosen unit. Boost the leftmost random or rightmost unit in your hand by two. You can sort of manipulate this a little bit. Maybe if you have Sabertooth in hand, you don't choose something that's going to be boosting that, right? But uh, more than often, you're just going to be taking what you need and just dealing with the consequences from it because the rolls from Battleful Harvest since the rework or the nerf to Battleful Harvest haven't been in quite as nice. You're not going to be guaranteed the sorceresses every time, so... If you see a card like that, maybe you ought to take that card, even if it means boosting something in your hand that you didn't like plan for. So it really just comes down to the matchup, the timing, and the strategy in that game, how you take it. Talked about just extra removal, right? Five point reach. We have the engine value from Protector. If we get the death load, boost self by two, so it's kind of nice. Dimeridian bombs. Again, I think that the bomb package is fine, even without the Madoc here. Damage by four, damage adjacent by one's power, and then this is good for splitting up the rows, moving enemy to the other row, give it bleeding four. If it's the only unit on the row, damage it by four instead. So we can play this on like an empty board state if they have one card, just push to the row and get rid of it. I like it for that reason. Like, this isn't over committing to bombs without Madoc. If I started putting in maybe more expensive bombs, it would be, but in the four piece slot, it's just fine, right? And Pyrotechs are just good proactive cards to play. We put them down, we can wait a turn, next turn we can damage self by 4 and an enemy, random enemy unit by 4. So this could be good for taking out engines. Let's say we're playing into Syndicate and we, we go first. We put this down, they play Tax Collector first as they always do. And then we just go and click, click the card and get rid of that engine. So that's kind of the way that you position that. It also really helps set things up for other plays like Muzzle, Leader, etc. So pretty comfortable with having those in the spot here and then Brocklawn Sentinels I always like to play them with this leader because obviously you want to be able to take them from a thin from our leader right this uses a few damage charges then brings out a sentinel so we have five points of damage and then the ability to thin our deck so then it pulls these two from deck so we don't really want to hold these in hand right because you can see damage enemy by two death blow summon all copies so that's basically it so I've seen versions with Saskia in this leader and I, I'm just not a fan because of this thinning ability it just seems kind of like you're fighting two strategies at the same time so that's the deck I've got a few games for you guys today some of which have the spores some of which have the red haze either way we'll be showing wins and losses to show you where the deck excels and where the deck needs work and I'm hoping that and I'm probably one of the only ones but I'm hoping that this archetype gets a little bit of support because this is like how I used to play all the time and it's nice to reminisce and play this once in a while, but for now it's uh, a little bit more frustrating than it was in the past. So we'll get into the games here, and if you guys enjoy the content that you see on the channel, don't forget to subscribe. It looks like 42% of you guys who watch my content regularly are subscribed. The other, you know, more than half of you guys. Come on, man. 
All right, so moving on to the first one here, we got Northern Realms, Inspired Zeal, and this one's gonna be Mages. I think it's a Siege Mage hybrid. There's a lot of that going around right now. Fortunately, this deck plays pretty well into that because we have so many ways to get some removal and, you know, makes things that much easier. Hopefully you don't hear ice cubes in the background. About a week ago I joined uh, an affiliate program with Rogue Energy. They do like energy drinks and esports supplements and stuff like that. And uh, my samples just came in so I'm testing out the flavors. This one's like a blood orange. So far so good. We'll see how <laughs> we'll see how it feels towards the end of the video if the energy is rising and stuff like that or we're, we're falling short. But I have a coupon code for it in the description if you guys are interested in stocking up. If you guys like energy drinks and stuff like that, by all means, I get some of the proceeds from that as well. So it's a way to support the uh, the channel. They got the Rapports coming down. Again, they go give it zeal. Like, we do have ways to remove this, right? We got leader. We've got bombs. That helps a little bit too because they played on melee. I don't want to go as far as taking a heat wave here. I think it's kind of expensive. I don't mind maybe overkilling, taking a rebuke, and just like hitting that down to a two, throwing a few pings around, getting rid of the student on the melee row and the rapids. what we end up doing here yeah it's just the ping there death blow on the student because if those things get out of hand man they're gonna be bad right actually that works out quite well no over commitments on the turn and it's one of those things too like we actually don't mind thinning out the leader early on because I've tried both ways I've tried to hold on to it and preserve the points for round three. Although I like the extra flexibility with the leader, it makes taking that round three mulligan so risky that we often miss cards anyways because we're trying to keep these in deck and we're trying to pull the other cards. Like We'll end up pulling one of these at least in round three most of the time. So just take it early, maybe round one or into a bleed round two if you went uneven. Or to defend the bleed round two, right? That's kind of annoying. It's one of those things where they might have Siege, they might not have Siege, so... We'll have to see. They could just have the Carabalistas in there for the Henselt as like a backup if that's what they're looking to do, right? What's nice is that they're setting up a bit of a spores. The 14 power here is kind of nice. It's also a good heat wave, but I think it's more of a spores. The issue is that they just benefit from that cooldown like continuously, right? That kind of solves our problems too. If we move it, then they can't keep using it, and then we can spores it later. Spores playing for 9 points is pretty good for 4 revisions, right? So, there we go.
I accidentally queued into a seasonal game with this deck and it was a lot of fun. However, I think I'm going to go and make something for seasonal after I finish fin like doing this video because uh, it was actually kind of fun. It was like the double, double time, double something, double down. Yeah, I got to look at it. I need to complete a few more games to get some of the reward tree stuff unlocked so I can get it finished. It's sort of bottlenecking, so I need like five games played or four games played or something like that, so. And at this point of the season too, we've we've made our way around the factions quite well. Kind of just looking at what we want to put back so we can pull up a Simulus. Simulus right now goes into the double bombs, which is not really great. Like the, we, we kind of prefer Dimeridian bombs opposed to the making of bombs if we're going to go Simulus into them. And that's not bad. I don't mind taking first O'Nero here because we get a little bit of carryover if they decide to boiling oil that then it is what it is because it wouldn't survive in round three I don't think. If they want to duel it it's even more effective for us. Seeing that here is kind of expense. So yeah it's at two. So I'm not really trying to let that survive. It might even be worth the rebuke before the pass. Kind of just looking at if Simlas would be worth it. If I had rebukes for Simlas, then it might be worth it. But I think we just take the rebuke from hand and take care of the four. Shawnee's not as much of a problem here. Maybe they just try and boost her to 20 and complete a challenge or something. But uh, we should be fine. Yeah. Take that and so a boiling kind of puts us at zero disadvantage here for points down seven. They have an engine, we have nothing, it's a pass. So I don't mind playing one of the Bountifuls from hand because we did break it earlier. That's probably the best muscle we're ever going to get. And coming into round three is very challenging for them to start setting that up. At this point, when I see chapter, I'm thinking that it's probably not siege that's kind of unfortunate so alumni hasn't really gotten the value because of our work in round one right now we're sort of getting the payoff from that because we did spend a lot to make it happen early on leader and all could probably just cram a card and wait here that's not too threatening it does have the shield I don't think it's worth going into deck and trying to find something to remove that. And the first two games that we're playing are with Spores, the second two games that we're playing are with Red Haze. I still haven't figured out which one I like right now better because it seems like whenever I switch one for the other, it would be nicer to have the other one. So. Overall, might be spores. I don't know. Okay, so this is like really good. We can go double making a bomb. Let's push them back one at a time. Or double Dimeridians. Yeah, same thing.
So they go to greed. I think we just take a heat wave, right? And if we had the gate sword like I wanted to, that would have been such a really cool, like, hit that down and then sword that and take that, replay that type thing, but it's not worth it. I think protector here into a rebuke's kind of nice. Was kind of hoping to have, obviously, the bountiful, but control is probably a bit more important. We've got a pretty good lead. A lot of the big threats are out of the way as well. It's tough because I want to do like double up the combo, but I also want to lock that, right? You can't win. But what I do see here is a line where we play the uh, Etrial for seven damage and we take it out anyways. Yeah, and they just don't have a way of removing it. Play in our range for one. I don't know. I guess that's the only hope there is, right? Yeah, we take it out here. I was trying to put them beside each other so it looks nice, but I was trying to figure out which side it was. I think the correct way is to actually put the etrial to to the uh, to the right of it or the, the left of it. Yeah, the other way. Just based on the tree, right? So, don't have an artifact. That'd be nice if we had Tiger, but this is probably the most points here. We have another special we could play. And uh, we get a decent reset, right? Like, we have a card boosted up to 10 already. That's not bad. It's six points. It's not, you know, plus the three that we have on our side of the board that are going to spawn. We should just win in this case here. So fortunately, lock doesn't really do a whole lot here. The only engine that they'd really want to lock has Veil. Vale. I think we always just play Gord last to protect the points that we have. Also, it gives Gord the extra point, so... It's better, I guess, than holding out for a better... Yeah. They would have had a nice duel. So they take the seven because they have to assume last card's probably going to be Gord, right? And Gord plays for 18. Was going to pass, but they played down. We play like I'm showing you guys that we can win games with a big swing at the end. So that's pretty much it. This next matchup, Snowfguard double cross, and I honestly don't know if this is winnable. Like, I think I've tried different strategies that are really just pushing. I've tried uh, long round three, short round three. It's just hard to bleed them round two and keep your card because they have such crazy tempo, like mid to late game, that uh, it's tough. And early game is tough because the blight makers, right? So that's the problem. They get really good value too with the illusionists in this matchup because they can copy Pyrotex at one point with an armor. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I just I think that it's pretty much a 
a very unfavored matchup. Not to say you can't win, because they might not draw cards, they might not play well, so you could still try it. That's kind of what I'm doing here, is just showing you guys like the good and the bad, right? But I think it would be winnable if we had a few more points. Like, if we were able to have somehow an extra 10, 12 points in like around three, it, it might make the difference. It really depends. It's also probably a little bit better for us too on red coin than it is on blue. Boost by two. It's about the best we could do there. Kind of a low roll, but... I'm not complaining with Bountiful Harvest. I think before it was way too broken, so... I can live with the draws. Now, sometimes you get pretty cool combos, too. So far we're doing all right. Like we have cards that we can play and we still have enough points to sort of protect it. Uh, obviously we want them to concede in round one. I don't think we want to go into round two with a loss, especially after playing sim last. It's like a huge disadvantage. I got plans this afternoon to go see my grandmother. It's her birthday. Late 80s. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a good time. So, I'm gonna wrap this up, go do that, make another video. Pretty chill day. Again, just petty trades back and forth at this point. I don't want to commit too much. Like, it would be kind of bad if we had to take Muzzle here, but I almost don't mind playing Morin if it means it wins us the round. We just lose a little bit of that carryover that we're getting. We just punch it, I think. That's not bad. And we just... Boom. There. Could... Okay, that was a good click. It was like... At that point, it was like 50-50. We get decent clicks. Since Calviat, um, I don't find people are running Dead Man's Tongue nearly as much. However, Joachim's a thing, right? Or Joachim. So, 
spores might not be useless here. I just, I don't think pyrotechs are the way, so we go ahead and take that back. Like, we just want less for them to deal with. Guess I took back spores here because I had a heat wave in hand. It's kind of just as good. Start taking some carry over for Dunka. We have to hope that it doesn't go on the uh, saber tooth there. That's like the only disadvantage, really. Any other card would be fine to boost. Just uh, the one. I feel like we have to engage a little bit in round two, but we have to pull out from the round before it's too late. So I'm just trying to decide how we could do it with what we have. It just sucks because if we bleed or drive past, regardless, they're going to be having that mushy truffle carryover. And they always top deck into it because they have the Calviot. So unless they don't pull that round one, then this is usually the round two. I'm trying to decide. I don't want them to have bonded because it gives them more points, right? So maybe we just get rid of both this way. It's not that expensive, but it's not very high tempo for us. And this is what I mean by that, where the deck lacks points. We don't have big swing plays that we can play like them. Mushy Truffle might help. Maybe. Like, you could maybe go Mushy Truffle and put in, like, some bonded dwarfs. But I don't think Bonded Elves are the way in this deck. And even then, I don't love it. Because uh, then it sort of takes away from the no unit. Because we're bringing out extra units and we're boosting things with Truffle. But uh, that might be the case like for, for a round win condition at least. So we have a comfortable space here where I think that we can get away with maybe passing. What I'm really hoping for though is to take away their leader. Like that's a priority for me, taking away the leader and maybe tying up the cards, but it just doesn't seem possible when they pull like a combo like this. Like it barely keeps us ahead here. So I know if we keep playing, they're going to coup that and then just get like way ahead. And uh, who knows, they might even pull into the the other pair, right? And then just hit that truffle or something and then we're never getting back. So it, we're kind of pushed to pass in the situation. Can't say I love it, but at least we keep the card. Because uh, last say can make the difference. Yeah, and so they did pull. Right. And realistically, there, what would we, what could we have done? Like a rebuke or like saber tooth wasn't really gonna do much. Because that plays out of the way. I feel like Sporus isn't really as important. Also, Pyrotech kind of gives them something to work with, so maybe we just take it like this. And all in all, the hand looks decent, right? I'm just worried about bonding the cat with Etriel because uh, it sits at four. It's one of those things where once they see one of the two, they assume you have the other, they take care of it.
kind of ruins the strat a bit. There's a lot of good cards that they can pull from our hand. Um, Muzzle would be a big one. Heatwave would be a big one. Synthesis would be a big one. So we got to be careful with that. I don't really care as much for Onero because I'm assuming that they probably already have all their good cards in hand. So if anything, Onero is probably one of the better options for them to pick from our hand, like as far as what would benefit us. So we got to play some of those stronger cards first while trying to play around this Pyrotech, right? So normally I would like to muzzle that. However, I'm thinking uh, there was one time where I took a muzzle on the Mage Assassin and it worked out really poorly for me. So they just took Brathens, they took the coup, and they just kept making copy after copy. And uh, when you're proccing assimilate engines while creating assimilate engines, it gets pretty nasty. So yeah. Like, there's got to be a better target at, at this point for that. Taking muzzle against most things, though, in this matchup's bad. Because then they just coo it because it has spying. So, I can't go snag Lydia. Pyrotech's okay. I kind of want to take Sage, but that might be our best heat wave. So, or I keep calling him Sage because it's the it's scribe. You know what I'm saying? That guy, Range Row. By this point, though, I kind of had a strong feeling that we wouldn't make it. And uh, we got to get rid of the heat wave soon and offload that. I'm looking at what they have, and I'm thinking that they're probably going to pull a special from, okay, Bribery here, but then maybe one from the leader as well, and then, you know, one from the truffle. So I'm looking at... Uh, Sage being, or Scribe being worth the most points, potentially more than the Brathens. So it might have to take a heat wave, even though it's like a really bad time for it to take a heat wave. I just think that, you know, if they don't roll that turn, they're definitely going to roll the next turn, then they're guaranteed heat wave, which takes away. A tiger, so it's kind of one of the better things that we have going on right now. Plus, they have three in the back and only two in the front, so it's one of the things... It just feels so bad. If I had Gord in hand and we had that Onero for something else, then I'd be... That could definitely be an option, but... Gordon in hand in this matchup's bad too because they play so many special cards. So I'm pretty sure that Terra Nova isn't going to work because they haven't given anything spying. We've given something spying ourselves with Muzzle.
It's a yin on the seven. Kind of sucks because then it makes this card worth only a couple points. I know that when they play the froth, it'll affect that and get the assimilate proc anyways for three. So that's why we went and took it there. And then we just have to rely on Gord. And by the looks of it here, it's not enough. But it's going to be a little bit closer than it looks. Especially with like Dead Terran over, right? That's a 50-50 on the click and helps us out a little bit here. So don't click Tiger last turn, go for the Gord. And honestly, I think that's going to be one of the harder matchups than that. Maybe Druids. But uh, we came close. Moving on to the next one here, we've got Saskia. I think it's Saskia Traps, actually. So low unit versus low unit. Fortunately, we're on red. It's going to definitely help us here. But if they jam Saskia, I don't have a direct answer. And you can see here we have Red Haze in this one. This is the first of two with the Red Haze instead of the Spores because... Just wanted to try it out. So it's one of those things where if I lock that Catwitcher, then they don't pull another one. If I bomb it, they could pull another one. And those are pretty nasty with adrenaline. So I think I go and lock it here. Trust me, I did think about taking Muzzle. Like, we have, obviously, Ping Ping Muzzle, but it's fine. I don't know if we can actually win a round against Saskia. That's the problem. So, it might be one of those things where we just try and preserve stuff, take some carryover, instead of just messing around and not being able to get it anyways. Okay, we kind of want Dunka to stay. Don't love the fact that Sabretooth is boosted. But it has a funny way of working itself out later, so. I'd say the biggest threat at this point is things that do damage to the stuff that we have. And obviously turn end for them as well. They'll be getting the boost from the Matron sliding over um, to the right of the Pyrotech. So maybe taking out the Pyrotech is a decent move here. I just want to make sure that like we have reach if they temple on us and pass at 7 or something like that. So that's not too too bad. If they pass we take a sim last for example and that's fine. But otherwise we might have to pass shortly. Take that one out while we can. I was thinking for a second why the matron didn't move over to the right, but I it's all about the sequencing of uh front row before back row, right? And a uh, little bit of a throw play from them, not taking out the Dunka instead of the Morin, but maybe they just didn't realize that it still works if it's on the range row. I don't know. Or maybe they wanted me to play because it was out there and they were going to pass on me. It's hard to say. But realistically, I don't think we can get it. 
you know they've got one engine that's out there and then they have Saskia as well another engine that's out there bringing out potentially another engine so I'm thinking about leader The reason why is because I've had a similar matchup in the past where I kept this and I tried to pull out the Sentinels later on and it was traps and they had crushing traps that got value whereas at least now we don't have to worry too much about that and Simlash should be enough we take like a double rebuke or something like that So I think we just hit it for the most points that we can, right? Yeah. It's more than enough. Counter doesn't go down all the way, and then we just go for our pass here. But not taking out that uh, that Dunka earlier costed them maybe three or four points, right? So it's a pretty good hand. Gord can go back because we have our access to the Gord through Onero. And Bountifuls aren't bad. Like if we can sort of play them maybe into a soft bleed, we can get some carry over for round three. There's also an option to pass here and go into a long round, but it's hard to say. If they are traps, then it's going to be very difficult for them to get tempo. And if they aren't traps, then they're going to be playing cards for like four points from hand. Like in this round anyways, like the engines they have. So I feel like we have a bit of space to push it a little bit and kind of see where it goes. And uh, if anybody knows how long this uh, like leader skin of theirs is in the store for right now, let me know. Because um, I like to collect everything and uh, I'm like a little bit of Meteor Powder short. I need like 600 more. It's kind of one of the reasons why I want to play Seasonal as well because the tree has a lot of Meteor Powder. Pretty big carry over here. They're likely going to be able to get the points though. in it for the Milva. I don't think we care about removing Milva too much here. Like, we had the opportunity to do it. I just think it would have been maybe the wrong time to do it. But uh, we can go muzzle the six, which is a really big swing for us. Because that could just get out of hand, I think. And Saber coming down on the melee row. Um, I probably would have put it on range just in case we passed there they would have been able to get the extra points if i'm not mistaken right the one extra point when the matron slides to the end of the row turn end so they would have been at 13 but uh i'm looking at this play like all right now it costed them a little bit i think this is as far as we're going to be able to take it without having to spend something a bit more expensive from hand i do think we probably would have been able to get out next turn anyways but it's one of those things We started to see what we want to see here. So traps now are confirmed, right? I had my suspicions the entire game, but when you saw Tiger and then that trap, it's pretty safe to say round three is going to be a lot of traps.
That's like a really good hand. So they go first, which is okay, but we have to now play into the traps. I'm thinking that this was probably incinerating trap or pitfall trap because we usually play tiger first, so it's pitfall. And this is what I was talking about earlier, like Sabretooth actually clutches it. It gets nine damage because it's nine provisions and then it's 10 power, so we can just go flip it and heal it for next turn. We're back up to seven power. So I'm feeling really good about that trade. It's like the one time where you actually don't mind seeing that, you know? Uh, we can click that. That could be Serpent. And then in this case, we're not really losing a whole lot. Yeah. I was thinking it was Serpent or Incinerating Trap. Either of which are fine. They played for five points. Now it's a little bit tough, but I'm thinking it has to be Crushing or Incinerating. So, the fact that it didn't spring tells me it's Crushing Trap. And, again, this could be just one of two. It's kind of tough, because I don't really want to just play cards for nothing. But at the same time, I don't want to Heat Wave that, because it's not off Hattori, so it's probably one of the Bronze ones, you know what I mean? So maybe we play the Etrial so we can play the Merliga on all the Dead Eyes. You know what I mean? Because even if it takes 5 damage, it's okay. And I don't want to stack the melee row. Just be or the range row, rather, because we have, you know, already tall units there. So that one's the one we want to heat wave. Because we're not going to be getting a better heat wave. And so here's the flip, and then this will just end the game. We take out three of those, Gord was worth the full potential, and uh, it just wasn't close. Moving on to the last game of the day, we have Arrakis Swarm. And this one's not like a Glusty Point Slam. It's more of like a, well, a bit of both, but uh, mainly like a classic Arrakis Swarm, which is like very daring in the meta right now. So big respect to those willing to try it. I kind of hope that there comes a time shortly where Swarm decks are just better. I enjoy playing Swarm quite a bit. Fire Sworn, Arrakis Sworn. Commandos are okay. Dead Eye is fun. I put out a Dead Eye deck recently, if you guys haven't seen it. It wasn't actually bad. Like, um, it was pretty comfortable. There were only a couple matchups that were somewhat difficult because we had a lot of engines going and stuff, but. Kind of an unlucky pull. We just go for the bombers here, I think, in both cases. Just try and wipe the board a little bit. But it's not a very high tempo play. Considering when I go and take this here, I'm kind of hoping to really press them. Because I don't know what it is yet. I see sunset, so that makes me think that it could be... Maybe the old version of, of Varactus. And then I see this, which kind of confirms it. So I'm thinking that there might not be something better to lock in this game. Maybe we ought to take, like, the Moron on that. Because it prevents three points, whereas doing the damage makes two points. But indirectly, it might actually prevent more points, because if they have Swarm payoff...
sure enough, yeah. That's actually something I feel like playing. Maybe I do that soon. I try and make an Arrakis Swarm deck like an actual Swarm deck that works. Or like as good as I can make it for now, you know? Because Siege matchups have slowed down quite a bit. Right now it feels like there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of alumni, a lot of syndicate off the books, a lot of uh, Nilfgaard double cross. Maybe we get away with it, I don't know. I just hate to put something like a yurt in and um, have it cooed. Or have it, or only queue against like pirates as soon as I make the deck, you know? Just queue against pirates and revenants all day. Stockpile siege. Milva. <laughs> you know, all of that. So Sunset comes out in round one if they play. This is kind of why I'm persistent. I don't like to have that card come over into late rounds and be worth a lot of points. Maybe we just deal with it now. They're not even really far ahead. And Sunset comes down here. So this could be a pass, but it's within reach to actually win the round. If we take that for the seven while we can, I think we just use a couple leader charges. Kind of cheeky, you know? Nudge some things down, stay ahead. I kind of want to save it as long as I can, but ultimately I don't mind spending leader in round one because we know it bricks. So, making a bomb something because that's going to take some time to get the payoff. So if I take making a bomb, it means that I need to do something else like leader in order to make it work. So maybe we just go and we try to remove some tokens and whatever the case. I think... Uh, you could probably argue that taking out the token on the melee row is better in case they had like an adrenaline rush or something that goes wide, just an FYI, but I don't think it matters here anyways. Offensive Yen in the Swarm is great to see. And uh, we're kind of pressed. I either play, play Protector or we get out, and I think at this point we've committed enough to say we need to kind of take the round here, so this should secure it. Because I don't see them doing it in one at this point of the round, given the bleeding that they have on the uh, the back row, right? They're going to be one down six points. Okay, muzzle. Muzzle's good. So, if we pass, they pass, it would have been a tie. But uh, I feel like we have it. Yeah. So I think that's a bit better. Just to actually make sure. But either way, we put them in a bad spot. We could, you know, we could have passed there and just had, like, extra card advantage. But you never know what they're going to tempo with. And if we pull bad cards like this and they just cram it with a couple good cards, we could be in trouble. Like, if they just go super wide with it, we're stuck. And you see what I mean here? Like, a Triss, all these cards would suck. So now we can just trade a little bit at least. I don't think it's worth clicking Pyrotech just yet. I don't think the other two cards we have are playable either. Uh, actually, that's not bad. We could just take a 7-point Heat Wave. I don't think it's going to get much taller than that in round 3. At this point of the game, I wasn't thinking they had Glusty because they were going wide enough with it that usually you don't do both. But uh, yeah, it's probably just one of those things where you play down to one and you call it, go to round three, keep it short. We find our gourd and we're good to go. Because uh, we can't go muzzling a, a token here. It'll just put us in a bad spot.
Now, I think the rebukes and the muzzle are kind of bad together. I kind of want to maybe shuffle them back and look for something else. Tiger might be kind of nice here too because points are always nice. I don't value the direct control options as much because most of the cards you're going to see here are going to be deploy opposed to uh, engines. There we go. That's pretty good. So that just doesn't stick. I'll take my time removing it just because like they might have Osro, they might not. I haven't really seen any other tall targets though in the deck. So I'm thinking maybe they don't have Osro after all, right? I'm just kind of having a little check here like yeah, they're pulling twos and fours. So usually I would want I would want to put the spear tip combo too if I was doing Osroll and I haven't seen anything like that either. Now I guess that was the spores, yeah? Yeah. Not a great turn, but it's a turn. I think it's safer to play Muzzle first, even though we lose the bleeding damage at the end of the next turn, it's fine. Just rather keep the points safe. It's probably, okay, it's Glusty here, but imagine they had something for a Gord for whatever reason, right? We just take the win here. We'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Thanks for hanging out today.